So something I thought that would be fun to do here at the end of the year, because we're about to move into 2023, is recount some of my favorite games from throughout the year that either came out a few years ago, and played for the first time this year, or I just got straight off of launch, because I did that for a couple of them. Anyway, let's begin with some rapid fire honorable mentions. Risk of Rain 2, Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition, Star Wars Republic Commando, and Dead Cells. Now on to another one, which I have right over here. Pokemon Legends Arceus. I, I played this one for like about 10 hours. I didn't really like it that much, but at least it wasn't as buggy of a mess as Scarlet and Violet, which I do not have. Moving on to three games that I just started and that I feel like I'm going to have a good time with over the next year or so are No Man's Sky. Look for a nice hat. Huh? Fire Emblem Three Houses and Splatoon 3. All these games I think are gonna be great and I'll maybe make a video on one or all of these at some point. I don't know. I'll figure something out eventually. I also really enjoyed Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope which I don't really have anywhere next to me because I bought it digitally. But it was a very fun game, just like the first one, and I'd recommend it. It's pretty good. Another game that I've finally gotten to after, what, five years since it came out is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And I for context, I owned Mario Kart 8 on my Wii U a few years back. And for my 5 sub special that I made a couple of months ago, that's what I used to make it my old copy of Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. Interesting little tidbit, huh? Not only is this a pretty decent upgrade by itself, but it also gives you double the game for half the price with the booster core space. So if you're into multiplayer games, need something for the family or whatever, I'd pick it up. It's pretty good. One that I played back in March that I enjoyed quite a lot was Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Now, to the shock of no one, it received high praise after it came out back in March. And I went out and I bought it on launch day. Was it good? I think so. Was it, like, if you need something to scale how good it really was, I beat it in under two days. Like, everything. I made the main story, the secret final boss, all of that, in, like, less than half a week. So there you go for that. And another little tidbit is... Xenoboy Chronicles Definitive Edition. I received it from this year for my birthday because I had to play the Xenoboy Chronicles 2, which I liked, but not a lot of other people did like because of its um more controversial mechanics. Maybe I'll talk to them about those eventually. But I had to play the two. Three was announced back in March, and I wanted to play the first one so I could have knowledge of everything that was going on in three because it was a fusion of the two going in. And so I played this and loved it. Fun fact actually, I beat it on the day that a Xenoboid 3 specific direct was being held, so. Good on me, I guess. Which brings me to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. By far my favorite game of this whole year. Like, I loved this so much. 
it, you will not un, you would not understand unless you've played it. Few games like story narrative driven ones. Few can actually make me cry. This one did a lot. Mostly around um the part. Just the part at the end of chapter five and the start of chapter six. It's like in that part I was on a roller coaster. It was like at the top of the roller coaster, at the top of the arch, and then quick fall for the whole party. And you're like, is it over? And then all of a sudden you just zip right back up into the hype train as the start of chapter 6 takes place. And it's amazing. And like, for all of the Xenoblade games, play them. Just play them, they're really good. And anyway, that's, that's gonna be about all for me. That was alright. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. See you around. Maybe one of these days I'll actually figure out how to do this better. Eh, it'll be fine.